back to my channel. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and an amazing week, and I hope everything is going well. For today's video, I'm doing a video that is highly requested. I feel like this is the most requested video I get on Instagram, on Twitter. On this channel, I don't do tons of like beauty videos. So I don't know, I just figured I would kind of do it, but I never had like a firm date on when I would film it. And then I filmed a video this week with Brent and lost my SD card. And I honestly think it worked out in the most perfect way because you know, the beauty community is just taking a little break, taking a little hiatus, dealing with some other things. The beauty community is just not in office this week. I think the universe lost my video with Brent purposely so that I could sit here today and deliver to you guys a beauty video. This past year has just been the most like incredible journey for not only my hair, but my skin and just like my mental health in general. I put together six different things that you guys can do to improve your skin and your hair and your life in general. And they're super easy and they're things that you can literally start doing right after this video. Get you going, kickstart your new life and glow you the hell up. I'm gonna break them down and then you guys can have your list and you guys can get started on your hair and skin and just full glow up journey. So first I'm gonna do a brief backstory on the skin issues that I deal with and the hair issues that I've dealt with. If you guys want to hear about like my skin issues and my hair issues and how my hair literally got fried off, keep watching. But if you want to skip all of that, which you definitely shouldn't, but I know some of y'all want to, the six things you need to know starts at 728 but watch the video. Okay, bye. My skin has always been not super, super, super bad, but nowhere near being really good. Up until like six months ago, I had never had one solid month of my skin looking the way that I wanted it to look. I have like hormonal acne. So basically the story of my life is I would work really, really hard to make my skin look as best as it possibly could. And then the week before my period would roll around and it would set me back to zero right when I would get it to a point where I'm like, wow, my skin's starting to look okay. It would just go back no matter what I would do no matter how hard I would try just disaster mode as far as my hair when I was younger I had really really long hair I was just blessed with like good hair that would grow really really long I had good hair even up until like junior high my hair was thriving what happened in junior high though I had a moment where I was a literal idiot having curly hair that was super super long in junior high you really don't know what to do with it I mean back then things were different there's junior high kids now that know what they're doing with their hair but you know back then it was literally unheard of if you could do your hair I did not know what to do with it so I would basically just put it in a ponytail every single day springtime came around and I noticed there was like a bunch of girls walking around campus that had cut their hair like this short I was in dance and like it was just such a cute hairstyle if you are a dancer you know that hairstyle you know when it's like the mom hairstyle but like a little more chic it just looked really really good on stage while you were dancing and so I saw a ton of girls cut their hair for springtime in this style and me being an idiot, not knowing that I was literally not white. I was like, I want this hairstyle too. One day before the bus came to get me in junior high, I put in a ponytail guys and I literally cut my hair off. All of it, like length, inches. I cut it all off. I went to school and then like I took my hair out and it dried. And that's when I realized that I made a horrible mistake. Maybe like 12 inches of my hair. It was bad. I figured the only way to make this hairstyle not look terrible was to just straighten my hair. A horrible idea on top of an already horrible idea. I went through all of high school with hair that was around this length and basically it never grew past that length. When I was a freshman in high school, I started wearing hair extensions. I've tried everything from clip-ins to tape-in extensions to weaves to partial weaves to partial wigs, full wigs, keratin extensions. The only thing I didn't do was beaded extensions. I think that's literally the only hair extension that I didn't, oh, and glue in, cause that's just dumb. Really when I started wearing keratin extensions was when my hair went downhill the most. And I started wearing keratin extensions when I was on YouTube. So you guys who have been here forever on my YouTube channel have seen that full journey and keratin extensions ruined my hair. It almost makes me want to throw up. I would be brushing my hair. I'd wake up in the morning. I would just literally be pulling my hair out. I can't even believe that I went through a period of my life where I allowed myself to watch my hair fall out from keratin extensions and still keep putting them in my head, telling myself that this was all normal and part of having keratin extensions. It's just, it's the dumbest thing that I've literally ever done. With keratin extensions, I was putting a lot of stress on my hair. It was too heavy. My hair was coming out and you could literally 
see the glue with the keratin, hair extension, and then the little sprouts, the hair follicles of my measly little five strands of hair that were glued to this heavy extension. And I let that go on for way too long and my hair got so thin and so fragile and so damaged. In my mind, just keep putting more in because now your hair looks so bad, you have to keep putting them in. That was my thought process and it was just dumb. And I know that. Fast forward to 2018, my skin is terrible. My hair, which was once thick, luscious, curly, long, Puerto Rican, black, beautiful hair was now disgustingly fried, thin, so fragile, so unhealthy. I was a mess. When you get to that point where you're just unhappy with the way that you look naturally, no hair extensions, no eyelash extensions, no makeup, nothing. When you get to the point where you're not happy with who you look at in the mirror when you're at that space, it is so easy to just divert to covering yourself up with makeup every single day, covering yourself up with hair extensions, and basically just thinking that the only remedy is to add more things on top of you to mask the things that you don't like. And that's what I was doing. There's a difference between putting extra things on top of your natural self to change up your look or feel confident in like a red lip. There's a difference between that and, and literally putting it on as a mask. I would rather be comfortable with nothing than only be comfortable with everything. It's just more fun that way when you're already comfortable with what's underneath and you're just experimenting and playing and adding versus like waking up every morning with just a different mindset. I wanted more than anything to just be naturally beautiful. And so if you look at photos of me from that time, you'll see me wearing a lot of makeup and a lot of hair extensions and manipulating my hair type, putting on this mask was holding me back from living the life that I wanted to live. I felt insecure if I would go surfing and I would have acne, things like that. I lived like that for a while and it put a lot of stress on me mentally and physically. And it wasn't until about a year ago, I figured I would change things up, change up my lifestyle and start working towards making myself feel comfortable with nothing versus making myself feel comfortable by adding. That's what this video is about. And I'm just gonna tell you guys six different things that I did that helped me switch that whole mentality and bring me over to a really positive side where now my skin, literally this is me with no makeup on, no makeup and my hair is in a bun right now because I'm deep conditioning it. So I'm sorry, it's not down, but I'll provide many a photo to see the difference between my hair. And this was a photo that I took this morning when I was deep conditioning. With all that being said, I know that was a long intro, but I felt like it was necessary to share with you guys what I've been through and why I decided to change all of my habits, you know? It's good to relate to someone and maybe you guys are dealing with the same thing. I don't know. Give this video a big thumbs up if you like when I do beauty and self-help videos like this. And if you guys want more, get this video to 100,000 likes and I will do another one next week if you guys want that. I don't know. Number one, kick the bad people out of your life. Kick them out. Obviously you think negative people are going to impact your mentality. If someone sucks and they're in your life, they're going to drain the energy out of you. I did not realize how much it affects your skin and your health. This is so crazy guys. My skin has not thrived this much since I was a literal child. Like since when you don't even have the glands in your body to produce bad skin. I look back on photos. I come across selfies of my skin where my skin looks horrible. And honestly, I look back to how I felt in that picture and I don't feel good. I look at other photos of other times in my life where my skin looks better. It's just a happier point in my life. I came to the conclusion it's not a coincidence. I scrolled back to around this time last year and I just noticed that my skin looked so bad. My hair looked just so bad in those photos. And I just, the vibe was just sad. This past six months has just been so many people that have been in my life for so many years saying, oh, Ava, your skin looks so good. Good. Are you doing anything different? I think ultimately, even if you're doing everything right with your skincare, if you aren't glowing from within, if there's something that is in your circle that's dimming your light, if they're dimming your shine, if something's causing you stress, it's going to show in your face. I don't care if you're literally going to the best facial dermatologist, whoever in the world, if you're not happy, it's going to show on your face. With any lifestyle change that you make, whether it's your skin, your health, your diet, literally anything. If you are about to set yourself on a path that you know is right for you, you need to cut everything out that is not going to propel you forward or be there for the ride. Not saying that my skin and my hair health is all owed to 
surrounding myself with good energy. But like, look at the photos of a time in my life where I definitely was not happy. Look at my life now. Look at the difference. Number two, see a dermatologist and see someone that knows your hair type. Now, when I was in high school, I could not afford healthcare. My family did not have money for healthcare. I understand growing up in a family that doesn't look at going to a dermatologist or seeing a doctor as like a normal thing, which isn't a, like a bad thing. Going to a dermatologist in my childhood was considered a luxury and I never got to experience that until I was much older. If you are lucky enough, to have healthcare in your family. And even if you're not, and skin is something that's really, really bothering you, I would try my hardest to go see a dermatologist that is good, spend time finding someone that's affordable. Don't break the bank going to a dermatologist. If you do have healthcare, make an appointment with a dermatologist, like literally, like, Make an appointment. This is also a luxury. This is not something that I could do as often as I should have as a kid. If you have a hair type that is ethnic, if you have a hair type that is curly, fine, anything. If you have a hair type that is like a specific region of hair, you need to be going to a hairstylist that understands your hair. And especially if your hair is curly, you need to go to a hairstylist that respects your hair type even up until last year, I would go to hairstylists that were used to dealing with white clients. I would get my hair colored, extensions put in by white hairstylists. That is not to say white hairstylists are someone that you should not go to. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I never seeked out someone that had the same hair type as me and the same ethnicity as me. Everyone has someone that is going to give them the best most relative advice to them. Go to a hairstylist that you relate to, someone that has been through it, someone that has grown up with the same hair texture as you, grown up with the same struggles as you that you've dealt with, with your hair, your skin, anything. They're going to know how to properly care for your hair because they've been through it. They've been through the bad, they've been through the good, they've figured it out, and now they can pass their knowledge to you. I started going to a curly hair, specialty curly hair um, salon in my city. It's called Curls One on One. It's really good. I have a girl, she does my hair, she understands curls, really doesn't matter like what race you are. It just really matters that someone understands how to care for your hair and loves and respects your hair texture and is going to make sure that you look good, you're gonna retain your health and they're not gonna leave you out of the salon looking busted because they didn't understand. When I was getting my hair taken care of by people that didn't understand my hair type, when I was getting my skin taken care of by basically the internet, which is what you're doing, but I'm telling you to go get some other professional help besides me. You wanna set yourself up with people that understand professionally what they're doing. Speaking of dermatologists, I am going to tell you guys the exact things that my dermatologist prescribed for me. This is not to say that you need the same things. I just know you guys want to know this information. I rather tell it to you so that if you do go to a dermatologist, you can say, my friend Ava got this, this, and this. Would this make sense for me? And they probably might tell you no, or they may tell you, yeah, well, let's try it out. So I'm just gonna tell you what I got prescribed for me from the dermatologist, why I got prescribed those things, just so you guys can have that information. Cause I know a lot of people don't do that in videos, but I'm gonna be that person and give that to you because that's what you're here for, the teeth. I basically explained to them I get hormonal acne. First instinct they did was they tried to prescribe me a daily pill that was basically like going to make my skin not have any hormonal acne. I don't take any daily pills. I don't take birth control. I don't take any of that because I'm really lazy and I cannot remind myself to take a pill daily. Give me a cream, you know? Get, do something like that. So that's basically what they did in place of the daily pill. So I got prescribed a night cream and a day cream. The night cream is called Adap. Pauline. And then the day cream is called Clindamycin and Benzyl Peroxide Topical Gel. And I'll put the information in the description box so you guys can like make sense of all these words. So that is basically to keep my skin clear of any new acne. So then another thing that I always had issues with, my skin has dark spots and hyperpigmentation easier. Like even the smallest little bump is going to give me a dark spot. That's just how I was blessed. So they prescribed me a bleaching cream that would basically take away all of the dark hyperpigmentation and work to take it away daily. I've been doing that for maybe like 
six months now. This is my skin before I started using it, and this is my skin after. Number three is a hair tip. It's to wear protective styles for any hair type. Putting heat damage on it daily is literally not going to grow your hair whatsoever, and every day that you put heat damage on your hair, your hair is going to get worse. Going to get worse. As you guys know, I wore wigs for a solid year. That is what I owe a lot of my hair growth to because my hair was braided up. I would leave my hair in braids for basically like two weeks to a month long tops. I would just let it sit and do its thing and I would experiment with all different types of wigs, purple, blue, pink, brown, curly, blonde. I would just go crazy with wigs and I really got into it because it was growing my hair so much. And I know during the time when my hair was like out of the wigs in between different wigs, I would post pictures of my hair growth and I would get a lot of comments being like, oh my God, Ava, why do you wear wigs? Your hair is so beautiful. And I'm like, the only reason why my hair is thriving is because I'm not touching it and I'm wearing these protective styles because it's growing like never before. It's literally growing like a wildfire. It didn't make sense to me to stop wearing wigs if wigs were growing my hair so fast. So basically I just told myself I would wear wigs until I really loved my hair length. But regardless, you don't have to wear wigs if you want to do protective styles. I found tons of different styles that I love to do with my curly hair. And that brings me to my next point. Give your hair and your skin time to do its own thing. Think of it this way. When you sleep, what is your body doing? It is resting. It is charging the batteries. Your body is getting ready to push you through a whole new day. Think of never sleeping literally for a year. Like you will die. <laughs> you will not be alive. That's the same with skin, hair, nails, anything. If you are constantly straightening your hair, manipulating your hair type, adding on tons of foundation, constantly putting stress on it. If you're constantly not giving your body time to rest and recover and be natural, it's never going to have time to fix things. So in those times when your skin, when your hair is resting, these are great times to work on self care, which brings me to my next point. Take time to care for yourself. This advice is relative to literally anything that you want to work on. Deep conditioning your hair, especially if you have curly hair, to retain that moisture. Right now my hair has a bunch of Olaplex in it, so that's what's going on here. Things like putting a towel over your head in front of a bowl of hot water and letting the steam open up your pores, doing a nice face mask, exfoliating, little things like that that's going to not only make your mental state better because you're caring for yourself and you're taking time for yourself, it's also just going to physically help you. So make sure to take time for yourself, spend some time doing some self-love on yourself because it's so important. Another thing that I want to say, especially if you have a hair texture that you don't usually wear that often, at least for me, reasons why I never wore my curly hair, I made the excuse that I didn't know what to do with it and that it was easier for my hair to just be straight because I knew how to do straight styles better. If you never give yourself a chance to have your natural hair texture, to have your natural skin out and about, you're never going to learn how to care for it properly. If you've never driven a car in your life, would you hop in a car and expect to be a literal NASCAR driver? No, I know it's hard, but you need to get through the trial and error of testing out styles with your natural hair and failing a few times. You're gonna fail. You're gonna fail until you make yourself look good. It's just the truth. But you're never going to learn to appreciate your hair in its natural state. You're never going to learn to appreciate your skin in its natural state if you don't live in your natural state. It's just not going to happen. When I first started wearing my hair curly, I went through tons of styles that I'm not proud of. You know, that's just the reality of trying something new. I went through hair products that made my hair too frizzy, too crunchy. I went through tons of different gels. I went through tons of different trials and errors. Give your hair time to do its thing. Give your skin time to do its thing. I know it's going to suck because you're not going to be good at it, but there's ways to get good at it faster, just like anything. And that brings me to my next point, which is find people that look like you that are on the same journey as you to get advice from. I know even myself, I've had so much fun going on YouTube, finding curly hairstyle videos or how people that look like me and have the same hair types as me straighten their hair condition their hair, wash their hair, all sorts of things. There's so much research to be learned on something that you're trying to get good at. That's true for skincare videos, hair care videos like this one. You're gonna wanna do your research and find people that you can go to for advice. I'm going to link down below some specific videos that I've watched that have helped me out with everything from how to diffuse curly hair, how to add products into curly hair, all sorts of things. So I'm gonna add my favorite YouTubers that I literally go to for actual advice and the actual videos that have helped me in the description box 
so that if you have the same hair type as me, um, they can help you too. But yeah, find people like you for advice. Um, in your community, if there's someone that has amazing hair, I've asked so many of my curly haired friends what products they use and what's worked for them. That's just so helpful to have people that look like you giving their advice and their tips. So I have two more tips and the next one is to change your habits. I've talked about that a little bit in this video, maybe not doing heat hairstyles if you're trying to grow your hair. You need to basically stop looking at like short term results in order to get to the long term results. I used to wear makeup seven days a week Every single day, I would have so much fun doing full makeup looks. I went through a time where I was just all about makeup, but in order to focus more on skin, I had to switch up my habits and tell myself, okay, even though I love doing makeup looks, I want to get to a point where my skin looks flawless and really good with no makeup on. And so to do that, I need to give my skin time to breathe, time to be out in the open, even just on like a mental state, I need to get comfortable being out in public with no makeup. If you were to ask me, like two years ago, if I would ever go on a date with no makeup on, go out to dinner with friends with no makeup on to a nice restaurant, I'd probably have a completely different answer than now. And more often than not, I go out with friends with no makeup on, just throwing on a little bit of concealer, a little bit of lipstick, doing my eyebrows. The majority of dates that I go on, I don't have makeup on. I just have like a little bit of something, something on. I feel comfortable being in photos with no makeup on. If anything, I kind of like it more now. And that's all because I had to change up my mindset and change up my habits and get comfortable doing something new that I wasn't used to. Two years ago, if you asked me if I would do a photo shoot with my natural curly hair, I would be like, you're literally insane. Why would I do that? Now I've taken so many photos with my naturally curly hair, found out how to pose with my curly hair. You can't get to where you wanna go without taking the steps in between to get there. And the steps in between are changing up your habits little by little to get to here. Once you get to the place that you want to get at, you can always bounce back and forth between super crazy makeup looks, no makeup at all, super crazy nail styles, bare nails, acrylics, gel. There's tons of things, but you need to hop around, put yourself in situations that you don't feel comfortable so that ultimately you feel comfortable in any situation. And my last tip is to eat clean and take care of your body. What you're putting in is what you get out. You're gonna hear this in any single video. It's so important. If a plant drinks water, you can't throw a piece of bologna at a cactus and say, it's food, eat it, and expect that cactus to still look like a cactus within five days. It's just not gonna happen. You can have all the good things as long as you offset them with the basic core minimum that your body needs to function and survive. I don't ever deprive myself of that cookie, drinking that milkshake or something that's just not gonna be very good for me, as long as I know that I'm also getting all my other nutrition. And I know that this is a preference. There are people that really Really, really restrict themselves and are very hardcore in a certain diet. That's not necessarily a bad thing. And there's people that literally say, F everything, I'm gonna eat a fry and a potato and a bowl of spaghetti one day, not have any vegetables, not have anything and do their thing. If you're eating unhealthy, which again, for some people that might be um, an opinion on what's unhealthy and what's not, your skin is not going to look good. It's not gonna thrive. If you're not drinking water, your skin's gonna look just bad. Just make sure what you're putting in your body is something that you want to be seen on the outside. I think of it like this. This is kind of a weird analogy. So everyone thinks that poop is gross, okay? Like poop is literally just like the remnants of your body and everything that you ate. It's like expelling all the toxins. If you're literally just putting into your body plants, healthy fats, just like very lean, healthy things. Is poop really all that gross, okay? If you're eating fries, a milkshake, a greasy pit of grease, pizza, burgers, not saying pizza and burgers are unhealthy because you can really make them healthy if you want to, but it's where you get it from that makes it unhealthy. What you put into your body is going to come out and that's gonna come out really good. It's gonna come out looking real bad and smelling real bad. You know, poop was maybe a, a, a bad analogy, but just eat as healthy and clean as possible because your body is going to thank you on the outside. That's, that's the best way to say it. Guys, I know this video might be really long. I'm sorry, but I hope you guys stuck through it all and watched it and got some good advice. So that was Ava's guide to healthy hair and skin. It's been probably a one year journey since I started to protect my hair a little bit more smarter and care for my skin more. I've been on my skincare journey for about six months now and I can honestly say my skin has been consistently good 
for six months. I'm gonna put some before and afters of my hair and my skin so you guys can see the month by month transition of my hair and my skin and where I am now. But I feel so good, I feel so confident. I love my natural skin. I love being able to take my makeup off in front of my friends, in front of like just people that I'm like attracted to, my crushes. I just love feeling confident in my most natural state. Then you can really get to enjoy all of the fun stuff that's added on top of that. I love a good acrylic nail. I love a good eyelash extension. I have some in still right now. Love a good makeup look, love a good hair extension, a good straighten, a good bleach, a good anything like that. I love it. I'm never going to stop doing it. Never gonna stop changing up my look and changing up my hair. I cannot stress how much more enjoyable it is when you feel comfortable underneath it all. When you're not like waking up in the morning being like, oh, I have to cover this and I have to cover that. When you're literally just like, let's just have fun. And that's what I want all of you guys to experience. It just takes a journey and you have to be willing and ready to start that journey. And I know that you guys can all do it and we can all be a thriving 20 glow teen. Give this video a big thumbs up if you like when I do these types of videos. I don't do them often, but if you do want more glow up videos, if you guys want maybe a video on like how to glow up, like the full thing, I don't know. Let's get this video to 100K likes and I will know that you guys want more of these types of videos. Go ahead and follow me on my Instagram and Twitter and my vlog channel. All that will be linked down below as well as my new vlog from this week and last week. I'll post a little snippets of them here. I've been traveling. I've been doing some things. Also a fun new thing. I just started my photography account on Instagram. It's called my life is romantic at my life romantic. So go follow that in the description box below because you guys have already followed it. I kind of have always wanted to own one of those like popular inspo Instagram pages. And the fact that it's all my photography just makes it that much better. So go check it out in the description, follow the account if you haven't already. Other than that, I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys next week for another video. I love you guys, stay sexy. Bye.